it's 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. It's actually the last day of PA archery. Uh, well, the first season at least. Um, and it's a quiet, cold morning. Um, I'm bundled up, but so quiet. And we got a little bit of snow on the ground. And the leaves are really, really crunchy. So I could hear everything going on around me. And honestly, there has been like zero action this morning. Uh, I put out a, a few blind grunts and I got no response and I got no, I didn't even spook anything, I don't think. Um, so I decided to switch it up to the antlers and I, I threw out one rattling sequence and uh, I heard this guy coming in from like 400 yards just crashing in. So I was plenty ready for him. Um, he was uh, he was pretty far out there when I took the shot. Um, I think he was over 40 yards, which I don't normally take over a 40-yard shot, but uh, he stopped right there for me, and I put my 40-yard pin a little high, and I have a 50-yard pin on my boat too, and that one was still on him, so I just decided to take the shot, and uh, he crashed off into the woods, and I, I could have sworn I, I heard him like wheezing for about 30 seconds, so I, I honestly think he's dead right over here in the woods, but uh, I'm going to give it a little bit before I go searching. Uh, I passed on two eight points. Uh, which I showed those videos, but um, I wasn't going to pass on anything, you know, legal the last day of archery. So I took my shot when I had it. So I'm going to give it a little bit and probably get down and search for blood over here and search for my arrow. So I got down and I found the spot he was when I shot him um, and right, right off of that I found some blood so some pretty good blood trail here and then really good really good blood here and it's bright red so I think it's a long shot and uh, I actually range find it back to the tree stand where he was when I shot him and it was a 44 yard shot so that's pretty far for me I normally don't take that but you know it's the last day archery um, I'm probably going to take my stuff back to the truck, and then I'll come back and give him a little bit more time, and then look for my arrow and maybe start tracking this a little bit. Alright, so I come up on this, and this stuff has bubbles in it, and this is where I think I heard him wheezing, right in the woods over here. There's a pile there, a pile over there, and I think he's coughing up blood. So that's a good sign. I think he's a uh, long shot and he sh I should find him real soon here. So my camera battery actually died while I was tracking this, but uh, here it is. And I knew when he was coming in, uh, his right side was a little bit funky, uh, but it is pretty cool. Uh, I get up close and look at it. He's got like some pretty cool webbing going on up here and a little bit of like a small crab claw here and a, like a larger crab claw down here. But uh, it's obvious this thing got got injured on, you know, most likely his left side, and that's what caused the right right antler to, to grow kind of funny. But even the left side, um, that G2 comes off at an angle, which kind of almost creates a webbing effect on the top here as well, and it really gives it a lot of mass over here, which is pretty cool. It's all it's flat on top here, um, but it's a pretty massive deer. Uh, in general, I, I'm really wondering, uh, I can't wait to take the bottom jaw out and look at the teeth, see how old he is. I'm, I'm guessing three and a half to four and a half, but uh, if he was injured, then I don't know how much that affected his antler growth overall. And, you know, maybe he's an older deer and you just, it's hard to tell, but we'll see. Uh, you can tell he was rubbing up on some trees recently. He's got bark all in his antlers. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I would have passed on this deer earlier in the season because when you look at him from the side and uh, you know you don't know how massive he is um, he doesn't look all that impressive but uh, now that I get him up close he's a he's actually a very nice deer um, if I would have known uh, how massive he was I you know I'd have taken him any day of the season but uh I'm glad I got him on the last day coming through because I didn't have to pass him up. You know, this is the second year in a row I got one on the last last day of the season, and uh, I tell you what, that suspense really adds to the experience. 
it's almost grueling going through the whole season, passing deer up and not knowing if you're going to get one. But uh, when you actually finally get one on the last day, it, it is very satisfying. So um, I am, you know, very happy with this deer. I'll probably be doing uh, a European mount on him. So I'll show my process for boiling out the skull. Uh, I'll probably do a video on that. So stay tuned for that. Um, and now that I got my archery buck done, uh, it's time for trapping season, so should see some trapping videos coming up soon as well.